I'm really excited for a new series. The How Fat Loss Works series was so popular that I thought I'd come out with another series, and that's How Protein Works, okay? And today, we're gonna talk about protein balance. Now, some of you guys may have heard some of these concepts before. I actually got the idea for this uh, reading a new issue of Mass, a uh, publication by uh, Dr. Eric Helms, Dr. Mike Zordos, and Greg Knuckles, which discusses a lot of different studies out there. And I was going to do a video on that, which, by the way, you should be subscribed to Mass. I'll put a link below. Great research review if you want uh, awesome research. But I realized that a lot of people don't even know the basics of protein metabolism, or they think they do, and they don't really. So today I want to talk about how you actually build muscle how the actual tissue accumulates, all right? Because if we're anabolic, anabolic is the anabolism is the construction of larger molecules from smaller molecules. So if we're talking about building muscle, the, the myofibrils, um, actin, myosin, these contractile muscle proteins that you require to, to build more muscle tissue, this is all um, protein. It's made up of amino acids, okay? So when we talk about muscle, we talk about synthesis or degradation in this aspect, we're talking about proteins, uh, muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein degradation and muscle protein balance, okay? Now muscle protein balance is gonna typically follow what the rest of your body's doing, all right? If you're in a catabolic state and your liver is losing a lot of protein mass, you're probably not gonna be building muscle, okay? but it is a little bit specific. So when we talk about net protein balance, just like we talked about calorie balance, it's a balance, okay? So in order to build muscle, in order to be anabolic, in order to accumulate tissue, you need a positive muscle protein net balance. Net protein balance is determined by the rate of muscle protein synthesis, minus the rate of muscle protein degradation. So if you have a myofibril, for example, and your rate of synthesis on that particular myofibril exceeds the rate of degradation, that means you are making muscle faster than you are breaking it down. That is going to result in a net accretion of muscle protein. If degradation exceeds synthesis, that means you are breaking muscle down faster than you are building it. That is going to result in muscle loss. Obviously, most of us out there who are interested in building muscle, um, we want synthesis to exceed degradation. Okay, and I got this is what I got into from the, my my PhD research is on muscle protein metabolism. This this guy is my wheelhouse. This is this is a softball for me. I love this stuff, but. A lot of people have this, this incorrect notion that if we are in an anabolic state, that means that degradation is, is basically suppressed, that you're not having muscle protein degradation. Or if we're catabolic, that synthesis is suppressed. That is not true, okay? Both of these processes, just like we talked about with fat oxidation and lipogenesis, both processes occur at the same time. The relative rates of each are going to be what determines what your actual physiological outcome is. In the former case, fat loss versus fat gain. In this case, muscle loss versus muscle gain. Okay, so both of these processes are always running. In fact, muscle protein degradation is an extremely important process in fact, there's evidence that if you completely inhibited muscle protein degradation, that you would actually impair muscle protein synthesis because um, seven out of every eight amino acids used to synthesize new, new proteins are actu actually come from previously degraded proteins, okay? So actually, most of the amino acids that you're incorporating into this new muscle tissue are actually being recycled, okay? But degradation is a necessary process to break down those old, misfolded, or uh, proteins that need to be uh, degraded or reformed, okay? So that's an important process. And even 
is a natural part of the anabolic process. So these two processes are tied together. But overall, the net balance needs to be positive with synthesis exceeding degradation in order to build muscle. Now, how does that look in terms of the way food affects this, particularly if you eat enough protein? Now, we're gonna talk about the exact amounts and what actually happens on a molecular level in coming episodes, but in general, what happens is when you eat a meal containing sufficient protein, you get an increase in muscle protein synthesis, which is this, this solid line here, okay? And this is the, these are the rates. Now, again, if you're post-absorptive, if you haven't eaten, you will have a decreased rate of muscle protein synthesis, a basal rate. Your basal rate, the body requires just to keep the lights on, okay? Just like your BMR, when we were talking about fat loss. There's a certain amount of caloric expenditure your body requires just to keep the lights on, okay? There's a certain amount of protein synthesis and degradation that your body requires just to keep the lights on. In the basal state, their, their rates are about equal. However, if you're post-absorptive or fasted, the rate of degradation is gonna exceed the rate of synthesis, okay? Sorry to everybody who thinks that fasting is anabolic. You're wrong. I do not know how to put it any more plainly than that. You're wrong. Fasting is not anabolic, it's catabolic. When you eat a meal, assuming it contains sufficient protein and of sufficient quality, you get an increase in the rate of muscle protein synthesis. Now notice degradation, this hash line, also increases when you eat food. Now wait a minute, I thought you said food was anabolic. How, how, well yes, both increase. Notice that the rate of synthesis is exceeding the rate of degradation, okay? So your area under the curve here is in a positive net balance, synthesis exceeding degradation. As you go into post-absorptive, as synthesis starts to fall off, you see that degradation now starts to exceed synthesis, okay? So now you have this area here and that is catabolic because degradation is exceeding synthesis. Eat another meal, it goes back up, okay? And this process continues throughout the day. If you could perform an integration on these curves, on these peaks, you could determine what your net, your net balance is, okay? So if these, this, this areas, these areas exceed these areas, you are going to be net positive and anabolic. If the area under the curve of these degradation exceeds this, you will be catabolic. Once again, I want to impress on you that the body is not like a light switch, okay? If you're anabolic, it's not like you just turn the lights on, synthesis goes up to max, degradation goes down to zero. That's not how it works. Just like um, in fat loss, just because you are in a caloric deficit doesn't mean you just shut off the lights and all fat storage everywhere stops. That is not how it works. How it works is the relative rates of each change. So again, when you are in a positive net balance, the rate of synthesis will exceed the rate of degradation. When you're in a negative protein balance, the rate of degradation will exceed the rate of synthesis. This episode is gonna help set us up for the, for the next episodes, but this is a fundamental thing to understand. Both these things occurring at the same time. Now, in the next episode, we're gonna talk more about muscle protein synthesis, how to trigger mu muscle protein synthesis, and how different uh, types of protein and amounts of protein can affect muscle protein synthesis. Also, the molecular mechanisms of protein synthesis in, in a, a few episodes from now. You guys are going to love that. Stay tuned and subscribe.